All right, so all of this stuff is voodoo to me. We got yellow arrows, we got a dotted red line, we got a white X here with an arrow pointing at this thing. We got stuff coming out of electrical junction boxes. What does all this crazy urban graffiti actually mean? Uh, it tells you where the next Illuminati meeting is. <laughs> the modern road learns about utility location oh, markings. So you got different colors, you got different symbols, you have little bits of text in there. I assume that each of these are pointing out different utilities that are all buried underground. Exactly. These are required by construction companies when they're going to excavate something that is in the public way, like in a street or a sidewalk or something like that. So what surprises me is that everyone's okay with just spray painting on there. Like this is all meant to be washed away? It doesn't really last very long. It's a special type of spray paint. Since it's on the ground, it has to be able to be sprayed upside down. Because most spray paint cans don't work it's like actually that. actually built to draw stuff on exactly. the Exactly. Who is the one making the marks on all of this stuff? In the United States, you can actually call 811 and they will hook you up with the resources to find out exactly what utilities are in your area. And then there are utilities locations companies that you can hire and they will come out and mark everything for you. So let's just start with the colors. We got white, yellow, red, uh, green, blue. What do the different colors mean? Well, each one is a different type of utility. The red, of course, is going to be power. Of you course. Can, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Right. <laughs> you can see how it centers around the uh, little junction box The electrical box here. junction right here. This one right here is a manhole cover. But on the manhole, it says electric. So that's a pretty good clue. Pretty good clue. <laughs> pretty yeah. good clue. Yeah. The white stuff is actually proposed excavation routes. There's nothing there now, but that's where they want to excavate. Blue is, of course, uh, drinkable water. Drinkable water. And the green is? Sewage. Non-drinkable water. Non-drinkable water. <laughs> Might yes. as well make it brown if I was in charge. Yes. And what about the yellow stuff? Yellow is gas or oil. Orange is telecom, cable. Got or it. Or fiber optic or that kind of stuff. Or something like that. So let's talk about shape. In this case, we got two arrows and three lines, which I assume means something's going this way, but I assume the distance between them is relevant? That is the approximate width, as I understand it. Now, if you've got one that's just a single line, that's going to be a really just a narrow single pipe or cable or something like that. All of this is not indicating what's already there, it's indicating what's going to be there? No, it's indicating what's already there, but it's so when they dig, they don't dig got into it. it. Got it, got in it, got it. In 1976, there was a terrible accident when a construction company dug into a gas line and it blew up an entire city block and oh, there were geez. a lot of fatalities. So the American uh, Public Works Association came up with this color coding and every construction company when they're excavating in the United States has to call in and find out where all of the utilities are and this is the commonly accepted color coding. And funnily enough, the colors are actually very strictly regulated so that they get the exact right shape. Interesting. So what, what does it mean when you have a diamond like this over here? The diamond over here, that's an actual duct that you have cables uh, so with. Starting here to there, there's actually something carved out. Exactly. Now, you'll also notice right over there, you'll see the initials DT. DT is probably the company that's going to be doing the excavating. There are codes that are established, like TWC for Time Warner Cable, ATT for AT&T, VZN for Verizon, that kind right, of thing. Right, right. That tells you who owns the cable that are in this area. Dude, this is friggin' amazing. This is stuff I walk by every single day and never even pause to think about, but now I'm gonna have like laser vision looking around for this stuff all the time. It's becoming like a weird obsession. I almost got hit by a car on the way over here because I was just walking across the street going, yeah, now, definitely now we just telecom. gotta learn how to do gang tags, all this stuff. Well, next, next up on the modern rogue, we can do this? One step at a time. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. All right, we're two weeks in to our trial at crunchyroll.com slash rogue. What have you been watching? I've been watching Sword Art Online. And? I'm really digging it. It's about a bunch of people trapped in an MMO. Like a VR MMO or? Yes, yes. And I have seen that happen to many of my friends. <laughs> for, for you, it's a documentary. Yes. It's not a fictitious <laughs> exactly, situation. That's exactly, exactly. I've been watching Ace Attorney. Did you ever play Phoenix Wright on the, the DS? No, but I'm familiar with oh it. Oh my God, I loved it so very much. It's so over the top. It's like Street Fighter meets Ally McBeal. <laughs> There's a reference that's current. <laughs> I'm curious. I absolutely recommend it. Everything about it is over the top, and I love everything. That sounds like a lot of fun, but it's all available on Crunchyroll. Heck yeah, you go to crunchyroll.com slash rogue, sign up for 30 days, you get to watch all of this stuff. I am very thankful for everyone in the comments recommending things for us to watch. Uh, keep that coming. Let us know what we should watch next. Oh, absolutely, man. Dude, crunchyroll.com slash rogue. Join us on our 30-day journey for an extravaganza of all-you-can-eat anime.